Hey, good morning. Welcome to the show. I'm Corinne. And I'm LaShondra. And together we're Everyday CNAs. That's right. I can't believe it. I've been a CNA for 35 plus years. And how long have you been a CNA? 22 years. And we are still going at it every day. Yes. Can't believe it. It's been a blessing. Today we have a lot of subjects that we're going to be covering. So I have to be honest with you. LaShondra, I really didn't study at all, and, right. and I got to cheat a little bit and bring out my notes. So yes. I do apologize to anyone that's viewing the show right now that I may glance down a little bit, but just bear with us because yes. it is a lot of very important information that we would like to get out to you um, today. So to start off, as everyone knows, today is Columbus Day. Yay! <laughs> so if you're going to be out and about in your community, please wear your mask. Um, please remember your good um, hand washing techniques and all yes. that. And um, that's what LaShondra is going to start off with is talking to you about some hand washing techniques. Yes, because Thursday is hand washing day. So it is. just make sure you wash your hands. If you can't get your, you know, get to soap and water, hand sanitizer, they have wipes now. You know, they have different things that you can use to keep your hands clean. Yeah, exactly. And um, here's some more important tips, especially with this pandemic um, going around. Um, I know the CNAs are doing everything they can to protect themselves, but just be aware of your surroundings when you leave your facility as far as pumping gas. Uh, make sure you wash and sanitize your hands um, after that using your ATM card, going through a drive through and you're using your ATM card, you know, take the time to wipe that off. Um, you know, wipe even using a Clorox wipe and wipe over your, um, I'm trying, I'm tongue tied right now, your steering wheel. Yes, well, people need to realize though, wearing gloves is not mm -hmm. good sanitation. You know, you can't wear the same glove and go touch everything. Exactly. So that's what people need to realize exactly. too, you know. And please, I see a lot of it. Yeah, and please make sure that when you expose of your masks and gloves, don't ruin the environment. Don't leave them around at Walmart parking lot. You know, gloves do not have fingers where they're yes. going to start walking across the parking lot and jump in that shopping cart because they got <laughs> shopping to do at Walmart. You know, so just be mindful yeah. of, um, of everything. Okay? And um, the last thing that we're actually going to discuss is very important during this pandemic. Oh, yes. And it is World Hunger Day, and it will fall on Friday, October the 16th. Yes. So in 1945, the United Nations recognized food is not a privilege, but a right. Mm -hmm. Food is the basic need. It's a human, it's a human right. Mm -hmm. And when we were doing some research, and I'm checking my notes to make sure that I'm letting you know this correctly, is that one out of nine people experience chronic hunger. Yes. To me, that's too much. Yes. Very much. So... You know, you have to think about this, like LaShonda said, that this was recognized in 1945. Yes. But it did not come about until 1979. So after that statement was made, it was made 34 years later. Well, a lot of our elders have to, you know, decide whether they're going to get groceries or their medication. A lot of them don't have, you know, the sources to go out and get food. So, you know, we have to be mindful of that, too. And if you know any elders, you know, go out in your community and take them food, take them groceries. They have produce now. They have, you know, like in my town, they have a, they set up a shop thing where you can go through and get fruit, vegetables. You know, if you don't need it, go take it to someone that does. Right. And, you know, our children are also suffering um, doing this as well. Um, sometimes your children... They, they receive their meals at school. Yeah. You know, so I can imagine the teachers are more, they have a lot to focus on keeping their children safe and themselves in the classroom. But just, can you imagine a teacher worrying about they're sending their students home, they may not have food, or in the summertime and when all the schools and stuff shut down before summertime, they're worrying, are, are they getting taken care of? Are they getting their food? And I know in our community, you have where the district was actually setting up 
certain areas, like you can go yes. get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. But with so many parents out of work, did they have the transportation? Do they have the gas to actually go and pick up these meals, you know? And another thing that's very important is in our community, they pretty much lock down the Meals on Wheels program. I don't know yes. if they have it in your yeah, they area Yeah, they've taken not. it away. But they don't have no drivers. The drivers that were volunteering their old free time, their gas and everything to go out, they're afraid to go and knock on these elders' doors yes. because they're afraid of getting this virus. Yes. And it's and it's 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 sad because when you do the Meals on Wheels program, when it's not just the food that you are delivering, you are delivering a conversation. You're delivering, you know, their self-esteem, everything. Yes. And you know when you go to knock on that door and that elder does not respond and you know that they're there like clockwork getting, getting their meals, it can kind of trigger you to like, okay, is there an emergency number? Can I go to a neighbor and check? Yes. You know, and that's a lot of ways that the community reached out to our elders by going and checking well, on yeah, their home. Well, yeah, you, you want to keep a check on them. Like mm -hmm. I said, if you live close to an elderly person, you please go and check on them because they live by themselves, most of them, and they're, they're so independent to where they won't ask you for anything. So yeah. you have to go and offer. So yeah. please, just be mindful. Yeah, I wrote down um, a little thing in my, in my notes, and... It's this, the pandemic has really took a toll on everyone. Um, so let's try to build a brighter future, um, a new tomorrow, and just really reach out and love one another. You know, I mean, it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to bunker down in your house. Yes. But don't forget about the others in your community community that they may feel embarrassed or ashamed to reach out yes. to help. And also to our CNAs, some of our CNAs, they may work one, two, up to three and four jobs at, at some times. And since the pandemic, they may not be able to get into another facility to mm -hmm. do that job. So if you see a coworker struggling, reach out to them. Yes. You know, they will also feel embarrassed of and, well, and ashamed. And, and if you live next to a CNA a couple blocks away, go, you know, ask them, hey, would you like to carpool or something? Or, you yes. know, pack an extra sandwich in your lunch. And if you see someone sitting there not eating their lunch, yes. you know, just say, hey, I got an extra lunch. I'm really full. You know, would you like the sandwich? And just... Just be very um, supportive. Well, yeah, because you other. brought up a good point because some some of them, some of the CNAs, they're struggling. You mm -hmm. know, even though they might work two and three jobs, it's still not enough. So, like I said, like you said, if you know someone, if you can help them in any way, because you don't know their struggles, you don't know their story. So, if you can help them in any way, especially exactly. doing now, people are not taking this well, you know, in their mental health. So, please mm -hmm. just help them. Please get out there in your community and just help as much as you can. You know, you might not have resources, but you know, you might know someone that can. Right. Even if you smile at, at someone, smiling at a stranger, you know, it's kind of hard when I'm sitting here thinking about that when I just said smile because they really can't see a smile under your face mask. Yeah. That's, yeah. But you can smile with your eyes. You can smile with your your body posture. I mean, you can, you you can know. wave. I mean, they know. Mm -hmm. They'll know, you know. Right, and that's exactly what they may need, like LaShondra mentioned, mentioned the mental health part of this, you know, and, and it's Mental Health Month as, as well. We all need to stick together and just really um, support one another during this pandemic, and we will get through it. It may take yes. a while, but we'll get back to normal. But um, we're seems like we're getting ready to run out of run out of time yeah, here so. but thank you for bearing with us and us looking down at our <laughs> at our notes and um it's just a lot of information that we're trying to um get out there and if you're watching this show if you're doing something different in your facility or in your community you know hashtag you know everyday cnas and your comments on facebook or, or on cna tv and let us know what you're doing to help your community on yes, the CNAs yes. in your facility. 
And uh, till then, stay strong and stay safe.